John, I feel like I'm a person and the inner subjectivity that I feel doesn't seem any different to when I was uh, 17, 18, 25, 35, and at my advanced old age now, until I look in the mirror, of course. Um, what does it mean for a person to persist in time that I feel like I'm the same thing? What, what, what's involved to understand that concept? Let me do a bit of ground clearing first. I mean, the, I think what you're really interested in is um, what is it for you? to persist through time. I mean, the, the question I ask myself mainly is, you know, what does it take for me to persist through time? And I don't really think there's a very interesting extra question about persons. I mean, if someone told me, I'll exist till so-and-so, hmm. is there some extra question about person? Do I really want to ask this? But will I still be a person? Hmm. Is that, is that, are you thinking, is it like, is being a person like being a Lord Mayor, where you could be a Lord Mayor for a while, and then you carry on existing. Yeah. You just <laughs> stop being Lord Mayor or stop being a person. So one big decision point is, is the question when you, whether, when you came into existence, when you go out of existence, and what it takes for you to persist, different to the question, what is it for, a, uh, for you to stop being a person? Right, right, be, right, right. I take it that when you stop being a person, you stop existing, <laughs> and when you came into existence, you're already a person. But if, if, if it's not like that, I mean, I could be convinced either way, then we've got a few different questions here. If, if, you, if the, the span of your existence is the span of your personhood, then we haven't got two questions. Right, here. and, and, and so. the, the expansion would be, you know, what, what do you characterize as persons? If I characterize myself as a person, that's fine, but are there other things that would be in the category of persons? Maybe all other people. I mean, I, I know I exist and I have an internal existence. I, I'm surmising you do by, by analogy, but I'm not sure. I'm not living. I don't feel what it feels like to, to be in your clothes. I mean, I think one, a good thing to think about is whether there's a really interesting question about what is it for people to exist that's different to what is it for cats to persist through time, mm -hmm. you know? Is there some extra special thing to say about me that's different to cats and it's not clear i mean uh of course if some religious views were right and you were an immaterial ghostly object that just happened to be interacting <laughs> with a biological organism then we'd have a very different story to tell about you right, than we right. would about cats because plausibly then when you say i what you're referring to is that ghostly object. And what you'd really be getting at then is what it takes for that ghostly object to persist through time. But if you're a human animal, if when you say I, you're referring to a human animal, and when I say you, I'm referring to a human mm -hmm. animal, right. then the question, what is it for you to persist through time, is the question, what is it for that human animal to persist through time. And presumably the answer to that wouldn't be so different to what is it for that cat sure, to sure, persist through sure time. So. so that sort of deflates the question a little bit. And it's a big decision point. Is it just a question about what it takes for animals to persist or is there some special question well, of personal identity? Th there's another deflation point and that is, is it different from a, an animate object like a cat or, 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 or a flower to exist through time from, an, from this table, from an inanimate object? What does it take for anything to persist through time? Looks like it's here, but I know there are questions about that, how you, how you deal with persisting through time. Right, I mean, there are very general abstract questions about what persistence comes to uh, that you can ask an abstraction of from particular worries about personhood. I mean, so one general abstract question is whether you should think of persisting through time as like being spread out in space. It's just being spread out on another dimension. So we might think of space-time as a four-dimensional object, and to persist through time is just to be spread out on the well, temporal one dimension. One object, the same object. Yes, one object is spread out. Just like this one object is spread out spatially on this model of persistence, persistence just amounts to being spread out mm -hmm. temporally. So what is it to uh, 
persist through time. It's for you to be an object that occupies a non-instantaneous mm. region of space-time. What is it to uh, be spread out spatially is for you to occupy a non zero spatial region and, and those are analogous and under that thinking yeah on that way of thinking and then another way of thinking is that space and time are sharply disanalogous in in this way and as it were well on one way of spelling this out you know the whole of reality just consists in now and then uh, it's not like you're spread out because there is just now. Of course, things are changing. So, oh, and now there's just now. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the thing that was no longer is, or, or some of the things that were no longer are. And then uh, that sort of framework, uh, you know, is one where you wouldn't think about persistence on the model of being spread out in time. You'd be thinking what it is to persist is for there to be a thing that is now, and it's also true that it will be that it's around, and you say it all in a very tensey kind of way. Mm -hmm. You all right, really so, take the tense seriously. So, so, so looking it together, I mean, if I look at it biologically, I'm I feel like I'm the same person, even though every molecule in my body might have been exchanged. Yes, but but I think it's important to notice you can make the same point about cats. This isn't anything special about people. Right, I right. mean, if we take a, a biological organism, right, yeah, right, right. So, that's why I think it's to some extent therapeutic to say everything, say everything we want to say about cats and then, but yeah, so, but there doesn't seem to be any paradox there in the thought that there can be an object that exists at two times, but it has certain parts at one time that are no longer parts at a later time. That's what you're really saying. There's no, arg there's no paradox in that to say a thing has certain parts at one time and different parts at a later time. And then you say, well, that's how uh, uh, biological organisms are. In fact, certain artifacts seem like that. I mean, uh, a Porsche might have one steering wheel at one time, and then it gets replaced by a walnut steering wheel. <laughs> a late, oh, wow, there's not, nothing, but there's nothing paradoxical there. It's just it's got one steering wheel as a part right, at one right. time. So it's not a point that's unique even to... Um, hmm. Maybe you could even tell a story where a Porsche has all its atoms replaced, mm. you know. Uh, someone slowly picks out over time mm. each atom and replaces it with a, a different atom. Mm. If, if that happens slowly enough, it mm -hmm. doesn't seem that it makes the Porsche go away. Yeah. So the, the, the thought that you could have a complete exchange of atoms and still um, uh, uh, continue to exist isn't uh, a feature unique to organisms. It's plausibly a trait that even cars enjoy. Mm.